Bonjour, c'est Émilie. Welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I wanted to take you outside because it was uh, International Wildlife Day a few days ago. And a few of you were asking me, take us outside with you, show us what you are doing, show us some of your photos and videos. So uh, here it is. Uh, I'm going to take you to one of my favorite spots. It's pretty close to where I live. It's a 20 minute walk. So uh, let's get started. So here we are uh, in my favorite spot in New Hampshire. It's a small pond that has been formed thanks to the beavers. And it's brought a lot of wildlife uh, here in New Hampshire. So uh, in the summer you can see uh, ospreys um, and turtles and eagles. Um, it's, it's really, really amazing what uh, the beavers have been able to create and they're really essential for our environment. So most of you know me as a macro photographer. I do a lot of macro photography and you guys ask me, show us what you're doing. So I have my website and Instagram account below. So feel free to, you know, follow me and, uh, and uh, check my website. But uh, here are a couple of uh, pictures um, that uh, I took this year. One of my favorite subjects is one that you find here is the red eft, it's a, a little salamander and the first two years of their life they're red and they wander around the forest soil. They're so much fun to capture and this photo it's one of my favorite uh, red eft photo because he's under that little leaf uh, kind of trying to protect uh, itself and it was right before the weather started getting cold so one of my favorite photo I spent many many hours uh, with them uh, photographing them but really any insect uh, any amphibian I am in I do a lot of frogs in the pond and uh, it's really fun if you come in the morning they kind of waking up a little cold they don't move too much so you can get really really close and this photo is one that I took with the 60 millimeter macro I was a few inches from the frog uh, and it was completely fine um, I moved really slowly back and uh, didn't disturb the frog and I got a good picture so I was very happy and that's that's part of you know being a wildlife photographer is getting the shot but also not disturbing your subject so you want to keep the distance that's why when I do uh, wildlife photography uh, I have right now the 150 400 with me and that's how I take the photos of the beavers I also love doing bees that's one bee that I did a year and a half ago and uh, it was really fun they come uh, here uh, around the pond there are some um, I think it's called golden rod correct me if I'm wrong uh, and it's kind of like their last meal before winter uh, and this photo was with the 60 millimeter macro with a flash but really anything I'm there even if it's you know going uh, out to the mail I always have my camera with me uh, because uh, there is a railing and I can usually find some spiders and flies on the railing and it makes for uh, a pretty neutral background so always always you should always have your camera with you because you never know what you can find even if it's a five minute walk uh, getting the mail you might get some really good shot like this photo uh, I took of a spider. It was super super teeny tiny uh, but it was uh, really cool to be able to capture it. And on the same railing I also got this picture of a fly. So uh, yeah that's my favorite railing. I should go and explore and find other railings maybe different color but I like that kind of off-white background. But macro is not the only thing that I like to capture. I also like wildlife. So the best fit for me is having the uh, 150, 400, and I always wear it on the side. I protected it uh, right now because I went through some bushes and I'm very protective of my gear. So here we go. It has a little, you know, protective bag here that actually came uh, with the lens. And right now it's working, so I'm keeping it that way. Um, but most of the time I don't have the bag because I want to be ready uh, to capture whatever is going to come my way. And then I also have my six little bag. And for today, I actually packed it with the EM1X and the 12 millimeter. Uh, that's what I'm using. I'm also, you can see, I have a tripod. Ah, 
<laughs> I don't like tripod, but hey, I kind of have to have a tripod to be able to shoot the video. So I made an exception and today uh, I carry uh, the Peak Design tripod with me. Uh, but otherwise, I usually have my 60 mm macro. If it's mushroom season, I have my 30 mm macro. And um, otherwise, I have an extra lens. So it could be the 12 to 100 Pro or also the 40 to 150. For me, it's really, really important to have telephoto lens because when I go and capture the photos of the beavers, I want that distance. I want to respect uh, the animal and make sure that I'm giving him enough space. I'm not bothering him. And so I'm always very, very aware of how the, uh, the animal is reacting. And if I see that they're, you know, pacing around, there's a problem, back off, leave them, come back another day. Uh, but uh, very often I just set up in one part of the pond, I observe them. I kind of been observing them for a very, very long time before I got any good pictures. And that's something you have to understand. Very often, you're not gonna go out and get the perfect picture. That's not how it works. You have to understand the animal, how, where he likes to go, if he has a type of schedule. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. So make sure that you are doing your homework before you go out or if you go out and you find an animal and you know that these animals like the beaver, they live around here, then take the time to observe them before even taking any pictures. And uh, let me tell you, your pictures are gonna be much better if you do that. So here, here are a couple of pictures I took from the beavers. Um, it's very fun to observe them in the winter. They like to pop from, uh, you know, pop the ice and come up. So some very cool pictures of them doing that. Um, you know, making holes to uh, come out. When it's completely frozen, it's harder to see them. They're not gonna come as often. Uh, and uh, they have some um, food cache that they have on the pond. So they can just get out of the lodge, eat um, whatever they had store uh, during the summer and fall, and then go back in the lodge. So I don't see them as often, especially this year. I haven't seen them uh, very, very often. And otherwise, here are a couple of pictures. Uh, this one is actually taken with the 40 to 150. Uh, I told you I like to have a lot of distance, but sometimes if I'm sitting in a place, there actually is one of the beaver who is really, really friendly. I call him Barry Tyson. Tyson because his little tail is like, uh, he probably got into a trap or something got him, an animal got him, but he survived so I can recognize him and he's the most friendly one. He, he usually comes and, and say hi and investigate and he brings some branches and will eat them next to me. So I'm, I'm very lucky in that way, but I'm also very mindful, they're wild animal. I don't know, you know, all the time how they will react. And especially the little beavers, they're more nervous. They slap their tail a lot. So I give them a lot and a lot of space to not disturb them. So here are a couple of photos I took uh, from uh, mostly Barry because he's really the, the one beaver that I feel comfortable with and that will come close to me and uh, usually give me some good poses. So uh, I'm gonna play a little slideshow for you guys. Enjoy. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed that slideshow and I want to know what you guys are shooting. Do you have like a, a favorite subject that you're following? I've been following those beavers for close to two years now. Do you, do you have something similar uh, in your area? And let me know, uh, you know, you can also put um, the link to some of your pictures so I can see them. I would love that. And remember that the safety of the animal comes first, not the photo. Well, I hope that you enjoy looking at uh, some of my work 
And um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them below. Also, if you are new and uh, you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate if you do it. That really helps my channel and that encourages me to produce more videos for you guys. If there is anything that you want me to talk about, uh, make sure to put it in the comments and I will do my best. I know some of you have asked me to do more macros, so that's, uh, that's in the work. Hopefully, um, you know, in April, I have a couple of videos on macro. And uh, until then, uh, have a great week. And I cannot wait to continue chatting with you in the comments. Bye, guys. Au revoir.